All right, what's on the bench today? Uh, Kai Wheat's uh, sent in a product to be reviewed. This is a KOT936, so it's a soldering soldering station. So I haven't reviewed a soldering iron before on my channel. I'm pretty particular about soldering irons, so we'll see how this goes. Um, so we have sponge stuff. Oh, we got the, I really like, instead of wet sponges, I, I live most of my life with wet sponges and it's, these, these Brillo pad things are so much better. So much better. Oh, look, you get a bunch of tips. You get five tips, most of which you'll never want to use. Um, really chisel tip is what you want. Um, let's see here. Let's get everything out of its package here. What is this? Oh, magnifying glass, look at that. Uh, they gave me some solder. And they also gave me uh, extra solder. So they gave me, it comes with solder, and then they also sell solder, I guess. This came as a separate thing. Uh, Kai Wheat, yeah, Kai Wheat solder wire diameter. Um, it's it's lead free. It's uh, 99, 99.3% tin and 0.7% copper. So it's tin copper. See how that works out. Uh, we got some gooseneck things. It's gonna have like, clips for holding a soldering station type of thing. Don't really care about that stuff. Now so, well, here we go. Here's the soldering station. And here is the iron holder. Here is the iron. And that's it. All right. So we have a uh, station we can adjust the temperature. All of my tips on my soldering iron are at 700 degrees Fahrenheit. So we will just leave it right there at 700 so we can compare apples and apples, my experience with my old soldering iron. Uh, and is there an on off switch? There's, oh here's on the side, that's kind of weird. Uh, I don't know if I like it on the side, but it's over on the side. Okay. And it's got a five pin DIN connector. No locking thing, it just pl pushes in. Uh, <laughs> well, that's interesting. They give you a they give you a Brillo pad, but then they have a sponge in the base of this thing. So I'm not sure what to think of that. Where do you put where do you put this thing? Uh, you jam it in there, I guess. Uh, that's not going to work. Just shove it down there. I don't know. Good thought, but there really is no place to put it. Uh, you're not going to put it there. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, this doesn't have a lot of weight to it, so it's going to it's going to move around on you. Uh, be better if this was a uh, a little heavier. Um, and then it comes with a a base, and the base has the little alligator clips and stuff. So if you want to, if you want to do that, so it's got, got these, oh, it's, they're already on there. All right, so it's got these little alligator clips and you can put this thing on the base and you can flip, flip these around and you can solder things with them and stuff. Uh, and then it's got one of these as the magnifier. All right, let me build this up and then we'll come back.
All right, here you go. Uh, I'm not really crazy about this, the way the station lays out. Um, this cord's gonna be on the way. Uh, you can't put things in here and solder it. This is, doesn't really reach over the top far enough. So if I was gonna use this, I'd probably maybe put that in the back somewhere and then just use this all by itself. That's, yeah, see this thing droops. It, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't, yeah, I think this is a fail. I, yeah, I'm not gonna use this, okay. <laughs> Okay, so before we turn it on, I don't like these tips. I don't like super sharp tips. They just don't do the job. So we're gonna take that out. Interesting. Uh, and we will take the tips that they give us here. Let's see, how do you open this? All right, let's dump those out. And which one do I like? I think this one here. Yeah, it's a uh, chisel tip, about a two millimeter, two millimeter chisel tip. So we'll put that in here. There's not really good thermal contact between the tip and the heating element. Um, there's an air gap there, so it's not a great thermal contact. Maybe it's meant to be that way. I don't know. Hopefully there's enough thermal that comes out the end. Uh, let's go ahead and tighten this down. All right, that's nice and tight. Uh, this has a little rubber thing. Um, all right, it's a little bit long. I, I'm, I'm used to, let me reach around the camera, sorry. You can see this one has a real short, short tip on it. So when I grab it, I'm only about two inches away from my work and that allows me to have a much better dexterity as something that has a super long element sticking away out in front. So you don't, you have a, a lever effect that it's hard to, hard to control. So uh, it's just a thing. All right, so let's turn it on for the first time. And of course it helps if you plug it in. All right, it has quite a short cord on it. So maybe a three, a one meter long cord, not very long. So I'm gonna um, put it over here so I, I can reach, reach my power outlet. And uh, we, will, we will get some solder out here. Let me use my solder first because I'm familiar with it so I can give you a good, a good analysis of how it works. Okay. So I am going to uh, reset my timer. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to turn the stopwatch on and um, wait for it to get hot. Of course, my Metcal would have already been hot by now, but that's cheating. It's much, much more expensive than this one. Okay, we're just gonna have to wait. We're just gonna, we're gonna have to wait. Uh, we get a little flashy sign here, so I'm saying maybe it's hot. Mm, oh yeah, it's just now becoming hot. That wasn't too bad. That was uh, 45 seconds. Um, yeah. Not bad, 45 seconds from cold to hot. I could live with that. Uh, let's see how it's doing here. Uh, oh, oh, it's not doing very good here. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of uh, heat in the tip. Uh, these have quite a bit of copper on them, these pads. And so as soon as you touch the pad on them, it, the, it goes cold. You can feel the iron 
you can feel the iron uh, start to stick. So after you hold it down, of course, it gets hot. Uh, but the initial, the initial uh, is a little bit on the slow side. Reminds me of the days before the Metcal. Yeah. And it is just a little bit slow. I'm going to turn up the temperature just a little bit. I'm going to go to 400 C and we'll see if things do get a little bit better. I don't know what the flashy light means. I'm assuming that's the relay inside this thing keeping the tip hot. So it looks like it's pretty well hot now. And yeah, that's a little bit. It's still still not a lot of heat in the tip like a Metcal. Um, so I'm probably not doing a good review because the Metcal is such a superior iron than than these type of things. Um, but it's going to get the job done. I mean, it's definitely going to get the job done. Let me get a piece of wire. Okay, I have some wire here. Let's stick some. Let's stick some wire through. If I can my vision correctly. There we go. All right. Let's see if we can solder a wire in place. Uh, this would drive me nuts. I'm so used to the Metcal. This would just drive me nuts. I mean, it, it does get the job done. It is. Sorry, I was interrupted. Um, so, I mean, it does get the job done. It does flow the solder. It does. It does act as the soldering iron. Um, would I recommend it? Uh, wow. I'm not sure what they charge for it. Maybe I should look that up first. <laughs> let me, let me do that. I don't like it. I do. I do not like it. Um, like I said, it's a bit of an unfair comparison with my fancy Metcal. So I'm going to get out a different sign iron and we'll do a side by side on that. And that'll be a fair test. So let's do that. All right, let's take two here. Um, I've had this in storage for a very long time. I bought this soldering iron in the late 1970s and I used it for decades and decades and decades. A uh, little foot fall up, fell off the bottom. <laughs> rubber, rubber feet fell off the bottom, so it's a little wobbly now. This is a Weller WTCPN. This is my main iron until I got the uh, until I got the Metcal, um, and it is a it it, it 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 did me well, and it's still working. I think I may have replaced some parts on it, which you can get. Um, I like the uh, uh, the holder a whole lot better than this one. It's very solid uh, and uh, really good. I like the cord better. It has a wiggly wiggly uh, um, silicone wire. Very very nice. Um, it has a locking connector on the front for the for the cord. Uh, plus it has a place for a sponge as well. Um, so yeah, it, it, I turned it on and it, it took about the same amount of time to heat up. And, uh, let's go ahead and put some solder down, solder down, oops, solder down on the board. Yeah, this one, this one's taken the heat much, much better. So, okay. So right away, this is a better soldering iron, uh, by far. All right. So you'd be happy. I mean, I'd be happy with this one. This one just won't wet. I mean, won't wet. I, I'm not describing it correctly. When you touch the iron onto the board, it immediately cools down and it has to heat back up again before the, the solder will flow. And it's so bad that it, it will melt the solder and then it will stick to the, to the, um, uh, the actual thing. Um, and it, it like freezes, the solder will freeze instantly instead of continuing to flow. Whereas this one has an, oops, I just, I just melted the cord a little bit on this one. So I don't think this one has a heat resistant cord, <laughs> which this one does. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, this one, this one will immediately take the heat and the, the solder stays, solder stays uh, flowing on the board, whereas this one goes cold on you. And I have turned up the temperature too a little bit, right? I went to 400 C, which is about 750. Um, and these are, op this one's operating at 700. My, my, uh, other iron was operating at 700. So I had to turn this one up even then. Uh, yeah. So unfortunately I can't recommend it. 
Uh, um, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Kai Wheats. I can't recommend your your product. Um, yeah, it just doesn't have enough heat heat in the uh, heat in the tip. So anyway, there you go. Um, I mean, it, it would get the job done. Um, it may be better than the soldering iron you've got. And uh, if the price is uh, in line with uh, what what you have to spend, it might be all right. Um, I just I I wouldn't be able to I wouldn't be able to deal with it. Okay, that was my review of the Kaiwitz KOT nine thirty six soldering iron station.